We're here to have a quick discussion today about the power relationships and the formulas that go along with them. Now, we know, and we've talked about before, and we'll see again, we have something. We have watts. We have true power. Now, true power is watts, and true power measured in watts can be known as some other things, right? We can call it active power, we can call it in-phase power, uh, we call it true power, we call it real power. Now our true power comes from resistance, right? Resistance in a circuit and current flowing through it or voltage across it is what provides us with that true power. So we're going to deal with true power, we're going to call it P and we're going to say it is measured in watts, which is W. Now we have three formulas that will work for true power. We have the main one, which uh, you're going to use the most often, which is P equals I squared R. So let's ensure we're talking about the current flowing across the resistor times the actual resistance. Now our true power goes here on the bottom side of a triangle or in phase because it's coming from that voltage and current which are both in phase with each other and the resistance. We can also go P equals I of the resistance times by the voltage of the resistance or we can go P equals the voltage of the resistance squared divided by the resistance. But still, your most common one is going to be that P equals I squared R. What we start talking about now when we're adding capacitors and inductors into a circuit is we're talking about reactive power. Now reactive power is actually occurring 90 degrees out of phase from our true power and it's due to inductance and it's due to capacitance in a circuit and voltage or current flowing through that inductor or flowing through that capacitor. Now reactive power, uh, power we can call quadrature power, wattless power, out of phase power are some of the common names for it. Now it is actually measured in volt amp reactive. So what we do is we call it Q is the symbol and we say it is measured in VAR, volt amp reactive. So because this is occurring due to capacitance and inductance in a circuit, we see it 90 degrees out of phase here on our right angle triangle. Now the main formula, the one that I think we're going to use the most is going to be Q, reactive power equals I X squared times x. So the current flowing through the reactive component, which is what the x is for, squared times the reactance. Well, it's just the same formula, but coming from a different place. Now we're also going to see q, reactive power, equals the reactive current times the reactive voltage. Same formula as here, just coming from a different place. And we're also going to see q equals the voltage of the reactance, right? The voltage drop across the reactive component squared divided by the reactance. So you'll notice these formulas are very, very similar and that's because they're both talking about power. It's just what kind of power and caused by what. And then this triangle is a good way for us to organize that relationship between them. Now the very last thing, we know triangles have three sides. What we see is this final side is the combination of the two, the total current and the total voltage of it in a circuit, whether it's due to resistance or whether it's the reactants, we have a total voltage and a total current. So we get something called apparent power. And that's all we're going to call apparent power. And I said apparent power is total volts and the total amps in a circuit. We're actually going to measure that in volt. or we'll say VA. The symbol for apparent power is S. So we get some formulas. All of them are going to work. 
I think the best one that we're going to want to use, most often we're going to use, is going to be S equals I total times E total. So total current, total voltage, and you can call it the I line and E line. It's pretty common too. But that's what it is. It's the total volts and the total amps in the whole circuit. We can also use S equals I total squared times the impedance or the total opposition in the circuit. Or we can go S equals E total squared divided by that total impedance in the circuit. I hope this helped. Um, the very last thing I just want to touch on very briefly is this relationship right here. This relationship right here, this angle, due to the horizontal and the hypotenuse, is called the power factor. Now the power factor is important for us. It's the relationship between the watts and the VA. So we get one final last formula that we want to talk about. We can go power factor equals watts over VA. And that number is always going to be between 0 and 1. Hope this helped. Thanks for watching.